Today we're looking at an emergency alert scenario by YP. Specifically this real-time EAS nuclear attack scenario. Interesting starting photo. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Full. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. Yeah, it's keeping up with the Jonases now. Just starting with an ad. Whoever you are. Stay ahead in the all new Tundra. Sally. So these are not my sponsors, by the way. Just thought I'd make that clear. This is CNN Breaking News. And we'll get right to questions. Well, thanks, John. This is pretty well done. I'm really glad to be with you. I know you're covering the situation in Europe closely. Yeah, you get an interruption. Just USA. Normal programming has been interrupted. All right, I don't. This is. I can tell this is made up, but it's pretty well done and integrated. I mean, just a little USA.gov thing. That's, that's kind of out there, but this is very well done. Rest of the U.S. government. Everyone receiving this broadcast should pay close attention. The information contained in this broadcast is vital to your safety. Please stand by. <laughs> Here's the sound effect we all know and love. If you're from the U.S., that is. Emergency alert. In any of the emergency response drills, because at the, at the nuclear plant that I work at, it's all very localized. There's never going to be a widespread EAS system like this. A lot of that would go through the, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, at least as far as the arm of the federal government that, that we would work with. But no, you, you, you wouldn't send this out nationwide. You, you'd have some alerts to even at the worst possible general emergency scenario, but it would be the, in the form of either an evacuation or shelter in place notice for people that are close to the plant, like within 50 miles or less. Don't want to send this far and wide. Don't want to panic people. The emergency alert system has been activated. This is a national emergency. All broadcast and cable system shall transmit this emergency action notification message. Important instructions vital to your safety will follow. This is pretty well done though. Not a test, okay. When you do a drill, it usually says this is a drill, this is a drill twice, and every communication you make, you say this is a drill twice, and then you The following close it message with, this is, is transmitted drill. at the request of the United States government. This is not a test. The United States has been subjected to a nuclear attack. The North American Aerospace Defense Command has detected the launch of 12 nuclear missiles aimed towards the mainland United States. 12. Four of the 12 missiles launched have been intercepted. The eight remaining nuclear missiles will strike the following locations in the next 15 to 20 minutes. Los Angeles, San Diego, I don't know Chicago, if announce how many Houston, they Phoenix, New York City, Philadelphia and Seattle. Just because a lot of that, I really don't know if they'd announce how many were intercepted, how many weren't. I, obviously, you'd announce, I could see announcing the estimated targets, and keep in mind they're estimated. 300 mile radius of these areas, everyone should seek out a fallout shelter as soon as possible. 300 mile radius? That's got to be due to the uncertainty of these estimates. No nuclear weapon is powerful enough to kill everything within a 300 mile radius. Even if they were all SAR bombas coming in via ICBM, even though a SAR bomba would not fit on an ICBM because it's such a big, bulky weapon, you'd need a pretty big rocket for that. That would be pretty easy to intercept. But anyway, that, that's got to be due to uncertainty of knowing where the, uh, the missiles are going to hit. Prolonged exposure will almost certainly kill you. Um, deliberately sending misleading information because almost certainly that's... That's a weird way of saying that. Could put your life at risk sounds more accurate. Can, because it has the potential to, depending on how much you get, where you are downwind of the explosions, but I don't know if I'd see that in an emergency address. Almost certainly kill you. Nuclear fallout is a byproduct of nuclear attacks, and prolonged exposure to it will almost certainly kill you. If a nearby area has been designated as a fallout <laughs> shelter, voice, get there right away. 
otherwise seek refuge on the lowest floor of a sturdy building's interior. Should probably also mention stay away from windows. Make sure you have enough food, drink, and a battery-operated radio. Wait until the all-clear has been given before leaving the fallout shelter. Do not use- But typically say for a certain number of days for food and drink, because that's vague if it's, I don't know, 14 days, 30 days, something like that. Telephone. The lines should be kept open in case of an emergency. Tune into a station that is serving your area for more information. The president will address the nation on all radio and television stations shortly. So don't, it says on all, but typically it lists like a radio channel to monitor. Stand by for this message. This is a national emergency. Think, anyway. I don't actually know. I've never seen a, a <laughs> nuclear... I've never done a nuclear strike scenario, but I've done other types of emergency scenarios involving nuclear plants. Would they give you a doom clock? I don't know. <laughs> There's also no way they're going to know it down to the second. And each missile isn't going to hit each target at once, so you're, maybe just nuclear strike is imminent. Sure. For a range, five to seven minutes, like in the crawl. Oh, the United States has good. been subjected to a nuclear attack. The North American Aerospace Defense Command has detected the launch of 12 nuclear missiles aimed towards the mainland United States. Four of the 12 missiles launched have been intercepted. The eight remaining nuclear missiles will strike the following locations in the next 15 to 20 minutes. I also... So, missiles and deliberately targeting cities? So this is far from a full-scale nuclear war, it's just a limited nuclear war, and they're not attacking military installations? Maybe they're just not telling people they're attacking military installations. If they are, they're leaving that out, but they're letting people know about that their interceptors shot down four of the missiles. I don't know. Angeles, San Diego, Chicago, Houston, Phoenix, New York City, Philadelphia and Seattle. Within a 300 mile radius of these areas, everyone should seek out a fallout shelter as soon as possible. Again, yeah. Nuclear fallout is a byproduct of nuclear attacks, and prolonged exposure to it will almost certainly kill you. If a nearby area has been <laughs> designated as a fallout you. shelter, no. <laughs> get there right away. Not to say that it wouldn't kill you, but that, that's just going to incite even more panic than needs to be. Just say, put your life at risk. You could even use the words grave danger. I've seen that on radiological postings in extreme areas. Been trained on it. I've never actually seen anything posted that said grave danger. Almost certainly kill you. <laughs> Wise, seek refuge on the lowest floor of a sturdy building's interior. Make sure you have a They're getting an update. Like I, the following the message is transmitted is at the on. request of the United States government. The North American Aerospace uh, Defense missiles. Command has detected the launch of five additional missiles directed towards the United States. These missiles are considered to be armed with nuclear warheads. Predicted impact sites include Washington, D.C., Jacksonville, Dallas, San Jose, and Anchorage. Interesting choice. I'm like, why, why Jackson? Uh... I don't know. This could just be a random act of terrorism for all we know. The United States Space Force has begun to intercept <laughs> these missiles. I know the Space Force is a real thing, but I still chuckle whenever I hear it. These missiles have a minimal likelihood of being intercepted. This is an attack warning. I repeat, this is an attack warning. An attack warning means that a full-scale nuclear attack from Russia has been commenced against... Does Russia only have... Um... Less than two dozen nuclear weapons in their arsenal in this alternate universe? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't seem like much like full scale. Um, and if they're attacking cities, the U.S. is going to hit back so much harder. The United States and that protective action must be taken immediately. It is too late to evacuate if you reside <laughs> in one of the cities that will be hit by the nuclear strike. Seek fallout shelter immediately. 10 to 15 All citizens minutes. living in the mainland United States should seek a fallout shelter now. These missiles are predicted to strike the said cities in 10 to 15 minutes. The number of fatalities and the magnitude of the damage are unknown at this time. Yeah, because they haven't hit yet. Um, 
Sneak shelter immediately. I've, I mean, I've seen that on things like tornado warning, so that's good. It is too late to evacuate. I mean, that's probably true, but I don't know if I've ever seen that on a notification or certainly anything that I've ever sent out in a drill. Seek shelter immediately. That's, I have to say that, that that's pretty spot on. <laughs> Two doom clocks now. At that point, it's just getting confusing. Just, just leave off the doom clocks. Just say, you know, 13, 13 missiles or however many. The crawl is actually, I think, doing a better job. This is an attack warning. I repeat, this is an attack warning. The other thing to add is that's when, like, they'll impact. We don't, technically, we don't know before they hit if they're going to be air burst, ground burst. Um, one thing that's worth checking out, and this might not be on this, but pull up your weather app, look at, look at wind speed and direction, just so you can get a sense of where the plumes might be coming from if, in the case of the fallout. In the case of the blast and shockwave though, if you're not already in a shelter, well, there's not really a whole lot you can do if you happen to be within that zone. But as far as blasts, if you're on like the outer, the outer edges of what's considered to be severe, underground shelters, indoors, Lowest level was good. I would also just add stay away from windows. It has detected the launch of 13 nuclear missiles from Russia. These nuclear missiles are predicted to strike the following cities. Los Angeles, San Jose, San just Diego, them all. Houston, Consolidated. Dallas, okay. Jacksonville, Chicago, Phoenix, New York City, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, here. Seattle, and Anchorage. Should you reside in one of these cities, seek fallout shelter now and brace for the impact. The first wave of nuclear missiles is expected to strike in approximately seven minutes, followed by the second wave in nine minutes. Fallout is the most dangerous in the first few hours after the detonation when it is giving off the highest levels of radiation. I mean, it's fresh. It There's a lot of short-lived radioisotopes that will decay away relatively quickly. So that that is true, at least within the initial areas. Though if it's an airburst, a lot, some of that will decay before it even hits the ground. But yeah, things have half-lives and they will decay away. Some things very slow slowly, but some things pretty quickly. It takes time for fallout to arrive back to ground level, often more than 15 minutes for areas outside of the immediate damage zones. True. This is enough time for you to be able to prevent significant radiation exposure by following these simple steps. Here we Nuclear go. Nuclear explosions can cause significant damage and casualties from blast, heat and radiation. And probably in that order of how many, of how much damage it would do in terms of what's the most severe. This part's pretty good. Get inside the nearest building to avoid radiation. Go to the- And, you know, blast shrapnel too, yeah. Mint ...or middle of the building, stay away from the outer walls and roof. Yep. Battery operated and hand crank radios will function after a nuclear detonation. I think he's referring to the electromagnetic pulse effect, which would be less if it's a ground burst, but much more as you get higher up into the atmosphere. Though, if it's a ground burst, the radiation hazard is going to be a lot worse. It's going to contaminate a lot more of the ground that it hits. Tune into 88.0 megahertz FM for official information okay. such as when it is safe to exit and where you should go. Bright flash can result in temporary blindness lasting less than a minute can also result in permanent blindness if you have to be looking directly at it and yeah just it just depends depends what you look at how intense the blast is how intense the bomb is Blast wave can result in death injuries and damage to structures up to a mile away from the blast that entirely depends on how powerful the bomb is depending on levels of damage um probably the heaviest damage would certainly be as you get closer to ground zero but some really powerful nuclear weapons uh one's north of 400 500 kilotons they can definitely have some blast effects well beyond a mile away from the epicenter so keep that in mind radiation not that you know where it's going to hit bodily cells large exposures can cause radiation sickness true fire and heat can result in death burn injuries and structural damage several miles away electromagnetic bring pulse the can cause damage to electronics up to several miles away from the detonation fallout is radioactive Visible dirt and debris raining down can cause sickness to those outside. That was all pretty good, and it, it's good they're briefing on all of the potential hazards because depending on the elevation and the specific type of nuclear weapon, 
some of these hazards will be worse than the others for any given weapon. So this is a pretty good synopsis. Concise, easy to understand. I could, I buy this as plausible for an emergency alert. Oh, it's just gonna repeat again or not. The emergency alert system will shift to radio transmission. All future alerts will be transmitted on 88.0 okay. and 108.0 megahertz FM. That's good, and just let this thing run to tell you if you're going to change any channel of communication. Communication is one of the most important things in any sort of emergency response scenario, so be sure to have if you're going to close this out, probably continue to have it play on a loop until everyone can get on that, that radio station, rather than shutting it off afterwards. This broadcast will conclude with the playing of the national anthem. The United States government thanks you for your cooperation. Really? Okay, alright. No, ending with this is just silly, and I mean, as much as, as, much as I love the U.S. national anthem, um, no. Play the part that just says to tune into the radio while this while that transmission's active, just in case people miss what the radio stations are, so they can tune in and you know stay apprised of any pertinent information for the emergency. But I don't know. If, I think this is just one his fun way of ending the video. But overall, this was pretty good. I don't know if this person has a background in emergency response or not. There were some silly things, but. I, overall, um, I could see this being somewhat plausible and I could certainly see anyone just stumbling on this in YouTube and whether they like fumble and click a couple of buttons and they might think it's actually a thing. <laughs> but yeah, overall, this one was pretty good. Let me know what you think. Also, let me know if I missed some inaccuracies. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.